YouTube, Zach here. Today we're going to be talking about heart block and how you can spot it on an ECG. To begin with, I'm going to assume that you already have a basic understanding of the ECG. If you're watching this in the distant future, we may already have a video covering just that. But if you're watching this in the distant past, it's enough to remember that the P wave represents the atrial impulse and the QRS complex represents the ventricular impulse. That's it, that's the ECG. Don't forget to subscribe. Zach, Zach, like we got the rest of the video, did he? Seriously? Yes. Okay. Okay, first things first. When we talk about heart block, we're talking about a block in the electrical conducting system of the heart, not in the blood supply. To put it more simply, you need an electrician, not a plumber. Sorry, Mario. Remember, in a healthy heart, contraction is triggered by a wave of depolarization that spreads across the myocardium. The impulse is generated by the sinoatrial node and spreads across the atria, moving cell to cell. It's then transmitted to the ventricles by the atrioventricular node, or AVN. It then runs down the bundle of His and up the Purkinje fibres, causing contraction as it goes. This impulse allows the heart to beat in a synchronised fashion, atria first, then ventricles. Heart block is any instance where the impulse gets interrupted. Understandably, this can go wrong in several different places, and there are therefore several different kinds of heart block. For today though, we're going to be talking about atrioventricular nodal block. There's a block between the atria and the ventricles. Basically, upstairs ain't talking to downstairs no more. This can be caused by elderly fibrosis or by ischemia if the AVN linking the two chambers is starved of the blood it needs to do its job. As this topic concerns a breakdown in relationships, we'll be joined by the queen of broken hearts and breakups, Miss Taylor Swift. Yo Taylor, I'ma happy for you and I'ma let you finish, but now nah, on second thoughts, you can finish. Thanks Taylor. Now there are three types of atrioventricular block. First, second, and third degree. So let's begin with the beginning. First degree heart block. For the purpose of today's performance, the role of P wave will be played by Taylor Swift, and the role of QRS complex will be played by a generic Taylor Swift boyfriend. In first degree heart block, transmission of the impulse from the atria to the ventricles is delayed. It's getting slowed down at the level of the AV node. You could say the impulse was not so swift. <laughs> On the ECG, this appears as a prolonged PR interval. That's the distance between the P wave and the R wave. On a normal ECG, this is usually between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds, or three to five small ECG squares. So first degree heart block is where the PR interval is longer than 0.2 seconds, but every P wave is still followed by a QRS complex because the impulse does make it through. It just takes a little longer than usual. Basically, if the PR interval is longer than one big ECG square, you've got yourself a spot of first degree heart block. It really is as simple as that. To go back to Taylor, there's some distance between her and her boyfriend, but they haven't broken up yet. There's just a blank space. So what about second degree heart block? Now this one's the most complex to get your head around, so pay attention. Most textbooks mention three different kinds of second degree heart block. This can be tricky, but remember the logic is the same with all three. The atria are contracting normally, but not every impulse from the atria makes it through to the ventricles. Some are not transmitted. The rate of P waves is regular, but every now and then the QRS drops a beat. DJ, drop a beat. Now you may have heard of Mobitz type one and type two. They're named after a guy called Voldemar Mobitz. I couldn't find a picture of him, so here's a picture of Voldemort. Mobitz type one is also known as the Venkyback rhythm, named after Carl Frederick Venkyback. Wait, Ralph Fiennes? So how do you tell the difference between type one and type two? Simple, Mobitz type one, the Venkyback rhythm, involves an increasing distance between P waves and QRS complexes an increasing PR interval, until eventually a QRS complex is dropped. Think, the impulse is really trying to make it through, but it gets more and more difficult, and eventually, one doesn't make it. Or in Taylor terms, Taylor Swift and her boyfriend steadily drift apart, and then, 
they break up. By contrast, Mobitz Type 2 lacks this progressive prolongation of PR waves. The PR interval is steady in between the dropped QRS complexes. The impulse keeps on plugging away, but eventually one isn't quite able to squeeze itself through the AB node. Think, everything seems fine between Taylor and Captain Hansen, but then she drops him. The final group is two to one block. Fortunately, this does exactly what it says on the tin. For every two atrial impulses, only one is conducted through to the ventricles. For every two P waves, there is only one QRS complex. I guess that counts as the on-again, off-again relationship. Let's move on to third degree heart block. This is more commonly known as complete heart block because the impulse is completely blocked. The atria are doing their thing, but none of the impulses are getting through. Thankfully, the heart has a failsafe for just such an occasion. An accessory pacemaker kicks in and fires off the ventricles. This is known as an escape rhythm. Unfortunately, it's not coordinated with the atria in the way that we're used to. There is no relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes on that ECG. You should be able to calculate both an atrial and a ventricular rate by looking at the P waves and the QRS complexes separately. The ventricular rate will typically be slower. Despite the ventricle's best attempts to keep going, they're no longer on speaking terms with the atria. As Taylor would see it, it's over between them, and they ain't never, ever, ever getting back together. Like ever. Without the use of a ventricular pacemaker. In summary, first degree is a delay. Second degree is the dropped beat, with three different memorable patterns. And third degree is a complete breakdown of the relationship. Thanks, Taylor. Join us next time when Tom Cruise will be taking us through inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, just kidding, that really would be a mission impossible. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. We'll be seeing you very soon.